This is Mr. Martin. These are the video notes for math analysis section 9.6. We're going to be talking about co polar coordinates. So uh, most of the time we deal with rectangular coordinates. So if I have a rectangular system, we have an x-axis and we have a y-axis. And if I want to get to a point somewhere over here, I would figure out how far over to the right I have to go, how far over to the right, and then how far up. And then the amount that I went to the right would be my value of x, and the amount I went up would be my value of y. So you go left, right, and then up, down, and you can get to any of the points on the coordinate grid. With polar coordinates, instead of x and y, we have r and theta. r is called our directed distance. It's like a radius. And theta is called the directed angle. And we're always going to measure the angle counterclockwise uh, from the pole to the segment. So if I want to get to this point over here, I figure out, well, what circle would this be on? So here's some circle that that point would be on. And this is a circle with a radius of r. So I would go either to the right or to the left. In this case, I'm going to go out to the right to get to that circle. And then I'm going to rotate along that circle until I get to the point where I get to. So I would have my directed distance and then I would rotate my directed angle to get a point r comma theta. And we can see here that we get a little right triangle if we um, look at the rectangular way to get there. So this would be my x and this would be my y. And if we use right triangle trig, we would get that the x distance would be r cosine theta and the y distance would be r sine theta. So, and we're going to use that later to convert uh, between rectangular and polar coordinates as well. So, um, I kind of mentioned this already, but when you're plotting points, you're going to move left or right based on the directed distance. If the directed distance is positive, you're going to move to the right. If it's negative, you'll move to the left. And then you rotate around the origin by the directed angle. So, if the directed angle is positive, you'll rotate counterclockwise. And if it's negative, you'll rotate clockwise. So let's take a look at uh, plotting a few points here. And I'm going to call this point A and this point B, the C and D and E. So if I want to plot each of these points, for the first one, my directed distance is 3. So I'm going to go out to the third circle, because each of these circles um, is radius is 1 greater than the one before it. So I'm going to go out to this third circle, and then I'm going to rotate in the negative direction, pi over 3. So that means I'm going to rotate clockwise, pi over 3, which is going to put me right over here. So there would be point A. All right, now for part B, I'm going to go out to the second circle, because its directed distance is 2, and I'm going to rotate in a positive direction, pi over 6. So here is point B. For C, I'm, again, I'm going to go out to the second circle, but this time I'm going to rotate negative 3 pi over 4. So if I was going to rotate negative 4 pi over 4, that would be the full 180 degrees, but I don't want to do that. I want to go one less, so that's going to put me at the pi over 4 right before that. So that's going to be C. Um, as you go through the video, make sure that you uh, write your questions in the margin of the paper so that you don't forget to ask them uh, in class, um, and then pause and rewind as needed. So for D, again, I'm going to go out to the third circle, and I'm going to rotate negative 3 pi over 4. So that's going to be rotating the same amount as point C. So here's point D. And then for E, I'm going to go negative 3. So this time I'm going to go to the left. So 1, 2, 3, and I'm going to rotate in a positive direction, pi over 4. So if I rotate 1 pi over 4, so I'm going to rotate 45 degrees this way, you can see I end up at the same place as D. So there's lots of different ways to get to a point. For this point over here in the third quadrant, we went positive 3 and then negative 3 pi over 4. I could have also gone positive 3 and then positive 5 pi over 4. Okay, so this point also could have been 
3 comma 5 pi over 4. Or I could have gone negative 3, and then I could have gone negative direction all the way around. I could have gone negative 3, negative 7 pi over 4. So with these two parts here, D and E, I've actually got four different representations, four different representations. of the same point. This is a bit different than uh, rectangular coordinates because for any point there's only one set of rectangular coordinates for a point, but here we could really have an infinite number of ways to represent a point on the polar plane. So when we're converting we saw in the picture that x, our x distance was r cosine theta and our y distance was r sine theta. And again, using right triangle trig and a little Pythagorean theorem, we know that the tangent of theta is going to be y over x. I'm usually going to use this as theta equals tan inverse of y over x. Most of the time, not always. And then, again, we'll have our Pythagorean theorem here from that triangle, r squared is x squared plus y squared. So let's convert these to rectangular. So now I have an r comma theta. So I know that my x coordinate is going to be 4 cosine pi over 2. So that's going to be 4 times 0, which is 0. And I know that y is going to be 4 times the sine of pi over 2. So that's going to be 4 times 1, which is 4. So now my point becomes 0, comma, 4. And that make, should make sense because if I went out to the fourth circle, here's my fourth circle, and then I'm going to rotate up here. Here's the circle. We'll draw the whole circle. Here's my point up at the top. So out 4, rotate pi over 2 right there. If we're looking at rectangular, I went 0 in the x direction and up 4 in the y direction, 0, 4. Next, I've got x is equal to 2 cosine pi over 6, which is 2 times root 3 over 2, which is root 3. And I've got y is equal to 2 sine of pi over 6. So it's 2 sine of pi over 6 is the y coordinate at pi over 6, so that's a half. So that's 2 times a half, which is 1. So we end up with the square root of 3, comma, 1. So if you need to brush up on your unit circle, um, I would do that because you're going to need to um, know that for this unit. Um, it's going to be very important. All right, so now let's convert each point to polar coordinates. So for this first one, we're looking at 2, 2. So 2, 2 is going to be along uh, the line y equals x. So we can kind of see that this is going to be um, an angle of 45 degrees because it's on that line y equals x, which would be pi over 4. But let's go ahead and show the work. So I know that theta is going to be the tan inverse of 2 over 2. So theta equals tan inverse of 1. And we know that the angle that has a tangent of 1 is pi over 4. And we know that r squared is uh, x squared plus y squared. So that's going to be 2 squared plus 2 squared, which is 8. So r is going to be the square root of 8, which is 2 root 2. So this rectangular point in polar form is going to be 2 root 2 comma pi over for the next one, let's take a look at that. We've got negative 1, 0. So if we had to guess, we're going to rotate. We could go out to 1 and then rotate around 180 degrees. That would be rotating pi degrees. Um, you know, so if we're thinking logically about this, we could have Uh, we could have 1 pi, 
or we could have negative 1, 0 also if we rotated that way. But let's go ahead and show the work. We've got theta equals the tan inverse of y over x, so 0 over negative 1. And knowing where the point would be on the rectangular, we know that this is going to have to be pi. And we've got r squared is going to be negative 1 squared plus 0 squared, so that's going to be 1. So r is equal to 1, so our polar point becomes 1 comma pi. All right, so that would be the work. Again, if you want to just draw the little graph for ones that maybe fall on that, um, the quadrant angles, it'll make your life a little bit easier. All right, so um, I'm going to stop the video here. And I'm going to uh, continue in a new video with uh, the remainder of the uh, examples, just so this video doesn't go long. Um, again, if you have any questions, make sure you write those down and um, ask me when you see me in class.